I made the movie Girls Trip. Right. I knew for a fact Regina Hall was the absolute first person we went to. Okay. Love Regina, right. one of my most frequent collaborators. I knew we wanted her. Right. Had a conversation with Latifah and Jada, and they said, man, we have not worked together in so long. We would love to work together. Now I got my three. Right. We were not thinking about Tiffany Haddish for that final role. Right. So I went in, knew that I wanted actresses on a certain level. So I knew I wanted Regina. Had a great conversation with Latifah and Jada. That worked out. Now I got to finish out that, that final role. Right. And then we went out and we cast it. She came in and killed the audition. Right. So it's like, you know, being a producer is like being a project manager. Right. You really have to know how to put all the pieces together. That's okay. my job. People right. say, what does a producer do? Because people get confused. They think it's like a director. You let yell at action and cut. Right. I always use the analogy that if you look at, at the Oscars, right. the final award of the night is Best Picture. Right. Who gets Best Picture? That's the producer. Right? That's after. Best director, best cinematography, best sound, best mm -hmm. editing, all of that. The producer was responsible for hiring all those other people. Right. Putting all the elements together. Okay. And ultimately, the final product is what the producers judged on. Now that we started off with Go Girls Trip, we're going to get to that later. You're thinking about doing a sequel. Yeah, man. Um, original cast or a different direction? Now, I got to have a cast in there. I gotta, I gotta take them, cause they, cause, cause people love those ladies. Yes, they love those characters. Yeah, well, that was uh, my first time seeing Tiffany Haddish. I had no idea who she was. Really, a lot and of then, people. And did. she, she, she stole the. Sh Actually, she stole the show. To be honest, yeah. yeah, all of them were great. Yeah, love Latifah. Yeah, uh, love Jada. Uh, yeah. Regina Hall. She's one of my favorites. But Tiffany Haddish, it was her mannerisms and and everything was just like. She was a breakout. Yeah. I mean, because she was, everybody else that came in and auditioned for that role, they were playing the character that right. they read on the page. But that's her. Tiffany that's became her. the character. Yeah. She took what was on the page and took it to the next right. level. Every now and then, you have a, a, a actor that's just made for a role. Right. Kevin Hart. Kevin had been in the game for, for years, right. right? Right. He hadn't had that mainstream breakout success. We did our movie, Think Like a Man. Right. And he needed just that platform and if you see Think Like a Man, he's kind of the maestro. Right. He's in there, you know what I mean? All the guys are around him. He's right. our narrator. Right. It was the perfect platform for his talent, his skill set. Right. Idris Elba, another one of my freaking collaborators. His first movie after The Wire was a little movie I made called The Gospel. And it was a faith-based film. Right. And Idris came in and played a Southern preacher. Yeah. And it was just the platform at that time that helped introduce them to new audiences that didn't know them. Right? Right. So it's that's what it's about. As a producer, you're just trying to put the pieces together. Right. It's like a puzzle, man. And everything got to fit. If it doesn't, the movie doesn't work. You look at Regina, excuse me, not Regina, but you look at Tiffany, there are some allegations that were made that since been dropped. Mm -hmm. You see the situation that happened with Jada and Will at the Oscars. We'll talk touching that a little later. Uh, and Tiffany says, everything that I had is dried up. Mm. You, you feel comfortable that that she, you're going to be able to go to a studio and say, look, we're going to do this movie. I need, I need the original cast. I do. I do. I certainly hope so. Um, I think that, you know, we are in a time period where there's not a lot of, um, there's not a lot of nuance. Right. It's just black or white, and the reality right. is that right. we live in a gray world. Um, and I think that, you know, she's very talented, obviously very remorseful, and has come out and apologized, and so... Uh, I certainly hope so. And I certainly would advocate for her, you know, girl strip too. I can't make it without her. Yeah, it, you know? it, 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 Come yeah. on. Because I don't know who I don't know who you can cast in that role. It would feel very obvious that right. you didn't have her. Right. You know? So we'll see how these things go. But um, you know, it is it is I always tell people that it becomes a tricky conversation when you align the art with the artist so much and you don't have a separation between right. art and artist. Right. And that doesn't mean that you justify bad behavior. It right. just means that sometimes, I'm not even talking about Tiffany, I'm talking about in general, you have to look at, um, at the art. Right. And you have to judge the art. And then you can also judge the artist. And sometimes one doesn't work, you know what I mean? You can't enjoy the art because art, right. you don't like the artist. That's right. fine. Right. But you do have to have a separate conversation right. between art and art. So when you talk about the art, Girls Trip 2, I would definitely want those four ladies. Right. What, where, where are you on cancel culture? It seems that we're now that if somebody makes a mistake, it's unforgiven. No matter, no matter how small it is, yeah. now nah, we're done with you. You can't do this anymore. Yeah. And, 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 and uh, like I said, we're going to talk about the, uh, the, the incident later. But I'm still going to buy, if Will Smith does a movie, I'm going to go see it. Yeah. If yeah. somebody does something, I'm, I'm going to go see it. Y'all, I'm not, I'm not going to let that happen. Yeah, yeah. You have to, it's like I said, nuance, bro. 
Um, you know, listen, you in the public eye. Yes. You are in media. You are every day. Yes. Right? Yes. Microphone in your face. Yes. And you got a whole bunch of people waiting for you to say just one little thing what wrong. Thing? Yes. Please. They yes. wait. You got yes. the Shannon Sharp haters. Yes. That's like, please say yes. something we yes. can jump on. Right? That's the world that we live in now, unfortunately. I love what social media can be at its best, right? It's the democratization of power to the people. Right. Everybody has a voice. Your voice can be heard. You don't have to be a Shannon Sharp. You don't have to be a Will Packer. Right. The other side of that is that you have a lot of people that weaponize it, man. Yes. You have a lot of people, and there's no room for a conversation other than you did wrong, you have to be canceled, you're out of here, right. we don't deal with you, we're going to do everything we can to stop you from here on out. Right. Well, there's no room for growth or redemption when you do that. Okay. There's no room for a conversation for people to learn also. Right. My opinion, I think uh, intentionality matters. Yes. What was your intention? Ten. What is your intent? Doesn't make it right. You can still do wrong Correct. while intending positive, but we have to take that into account, in my opinion. So I think that um, it's a pendulum that swings. You talk about cancel culture. There's been a lot of things that, you know, you look at African-Americans in media, a lot of opportunities we haven't had that we should have had, right? right? However, um, I think that you do have a pendulum that has swung so far that you do have a group of people that say, once there's anything that we can take issue with, that's it. Right. That it's over for that person. And very frequently, I don't agree. Now, I work in this industry. I know a lot of these imperfect people just like you do. Right. And I know a lot of times their intent is strong. Right. In the right place. It's a, it's, a, it's a process. It really is. That pendulum has swung one way. It'll swing back the other way. We just got to figure out we can all do better and be more progressive as a society. But it doesn't always mean that we throw out every person that makes a mistake. Right. I'm looking at comedians because I think it's getting harder and harder for them to do your, their job. Yeah. Now, we know there are certain things that, like, Eddie Murphy, I don't know if Eddie could have. In today's time, oh, the boy. joke that he told on Delirious mm -hmm. and Raw, mm -hmm. Bernie Mac. Uh, 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 Robert Harris, yeah, 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 that, 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 that nigga different time. It. It's, it's a different time. Yeah. How how do you, how do they walk this fine line? Because what they do, they take actual true things that have happened mm -hmm. and they make them funny. Yeah. I watched Dave Chappelle's monologue on Saturday Night Live. It might it was the greatest monologue. Yeah. The way he wove and yes. talked. Hey, he's like, they're land, they're land. I mean, it's full of landmines. Yes, and yes. he's stepping over every last Yes, one. so <laughs> deft. Just stepping, absolutely. <laughs> Didn't get him one time. Not one time. It matters how you say it. Because yes. he said some of the same types of things mm. that others have said, but the way that he said it, he is an expert storyteller. Yes. And that's the answer to your question. Comedians, right? And I've had this conversation with, with Kevin Hart. I've had this conversation with Rock. It matters how you deliver it and how you say it. You can say a lot of stuff, right? Right. But the way that you say it matters. Even if you look at the other, other side, somebody like a Donald Trump, right? I don't care where your politics are. Right. He's not a comedian. He has said some things that 90% of the people could not say. Right. But the way he says it in a charismatic way, which speaks to a certain segment of the population, allows him to get away with okay. it. That is the reality. Right. So when people say, well, you just can't be a comedian these days, I disagree. I think you have to work very hard to... It's getting harder, though. It, it, you have to be <laughs> careful. You have to be really good. But what, but what does that mean, Shannon? Does that mean that the bar is higher? Like, only, like, because the best... You know, you got to get better. The cream will rise to the top. Yes, it's you know what I mean. Like and it's not like Chappelle hadn't gotten in a bunch of trouble oh, with yeah. a certain you know group of people he, he, for he sure. Has, he has. But I also think it's the way that you say, and there's a deftness and mm -hmm. and deft -E uh, to the way that he handles controversial subjects and situations, and he's a master storyteller. Right. You know. So. Is, it, is it is it because it's sometimes that when you can make something funny and it takes the edge off of it. For sure. Because it's, people are laughing. People are like, oh, <laughs> yeah. when he kind of said some of the same things that got the other guys in trouble. You, right. you do realize that he's saying this, yes. right? But the way he said it, <laughs> it didn't feel like he was talking down to someone. Yeah. And the thing is, he, he, he pulled out a note. Yeah. And he apologized. He apologized he, off, 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 off the rip. He said, he said you Kanye, know, that's how you buy some time. That's all you had to do. <laughs> buy some time. <laughs> you know what to do. Hit the subscribe button and become an official member of Club Shay Shay where we do something before two something.